Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm gonna be extending my NAS server over here that one yeah that one and it's the Synology 1815 I think it's called I did a couple of videos back when I got it and it has just been running since I also did a video about putting in an 8 terabyte archive disk which I received a lot of comments that that would break before I even got out of the room. Um, it has been doing really well. But I did go out and buy a new drive. And just for the fun of it, I actually got a Western Digital Red Drive, which should be meant for, it says down here, NAS hard disk. I'm not sure face recognition is teasing me. So I'm gonna be putting that one in and it was um, kind of expensive. I paid 60, 2600 Danish kronos for that. That's just over 300 US dollars. A little bit less euros, right? Um, so we're gonna be putting that in and I'm gonna be exchanging a three terabyte drive with this eight terabyte drive. And I'm gonna be getting some storage out of that right away because my NAS box up here is using the, the Synology SHR which stands for Synology Hybrid RAID. This means that the, the Synology box does not make RAID over the disks but it makes RAID on areas on the disk. So instead of taking out full disks it can split up the disks and have that as different areas and in that way it can utilize disks better even though they're not the same size so even though I've, this is only my second 8 terabyte disks that I'm putting in I'll be getting a lot more space out of that if this was a regular RAID 5 uh, this is in a RAID 5 configuration up here but if this was a regular RAID 5, I wouldn't get any additional space out of this before I had exchanged all the disks in the box with 8 terabyte disks. Then I would be able to extend it. But now with this SHR, um, I can extend it right away when I have um, exchanged this disk. Okay, first here is the Synology box and yes, it's the DS1815+. Plus. And I have been um, wondering which drive I should exchange and I can, it, it's not making a lot of noise. Right now my uh, heater is blowing as well. I, I'm in my creepy basement here and uh, well there's no radiators down here. So I have an electric heater hidden away here under, the, under my bench to heat me up. Um, and I have been feeling the drives here to figure out which ones probably would be the bad ones. Mostly worn, worn down, worn down. And I've come to the conclusion that this number four here is vibrating the most. After that, it's actually number seven over here that I think is vibrating the most. And that's the archive drive, that's the new drive that I put in. The Seagate archive drive, 8 terabytes, with this shindle storage thing, shindle. Well, that's the way they store the data. But, um, well, I would like to change number 4 here, because I can feel the vibrations from that disk. And it just happens that number 4 and number 5 here, are three terabyte drives. They are Seagate, and they are 7,200 RPMs, and they are older drives. So um, I'm in luck. Number four, I'm gonna exchange with the eight terabyte drive right there. This is how it looks on the monitor. I have four terabyte, four terabyte, four terabyte, three terabyte, three terabyte, four terabyte the 8 terabyte and a 4 terabyte. Funny enough, these 4 terabytes are Hitachi drives. And Hitachi drives, they have a really good reputation. 
unfortunately Hitachi was bought by Western Digital um, so more or less there is only two hard drive vendors back uh, Western Digital and Seagate as far as I know what are the big ones on the SSDs there are more vendors available at the moment but well this is the number four that I want to exchange and we can actually go in and see some data on number four here we can get some health data on it and it will tell us that this hard drive has been on for 16,942 hours uh, let's see what that is in let's get a calculator here 16,942 and there are 24 hours in a day right so we'll divide that by 24 that is 705 days divided by 3 so this one has been on for about two years I don't know if it uh, counts um, where it was sitting before that but yeah that has run for two years been on for two years if we go down oh close and check out number seven down here health status on that that has been on for five thousand and three hours so um, that hasn't been used as much but let's go exchange that drive so let's take out drive number four and it's still vibrating so i should be able to press no i have the key right over here ah oh, taped on to the box one two three four is that it yeah it's gonna be complaining now i hope three terabytes awesome gonna put that down there yes we have complaining right there and it has now started to beep at me so let's uh, start by killing the beep that gets irritating really fast well can't find the beep so i'll live with it until i can exchange this let's see this was screwless, I forgot about that. So we we'll just unplug these plastic things here. There. Take the drive out, put it there. Take the other drive in. Put these back on. Like that. And we'll plot that in and see if it becomes happy. Let's see, it should go like this. Number four. There. Let's see if it checks out number four. It's still gonna be complaining until I um, go tell it to use that drive. tasting the drive that light there so now that drive has been put in and test here that it's degraded space please go to uh, disk group and repair I'm gonna go to disk group here uh, we're gonna manage and it suggests here that we should repair that's a good idea and it has found a new drive number four that it can use yes i want to use that and it says that all the data will be um, erased i'm fine with that let's do that and then we have to press apply and my capacity will be about 28 terabytes afterwards 
that will take a little bit. Right now it's about, it's up here, it's 23.6 terabytes. So I'll get another four point something terabytes. And now it's shut up. That's awesome. Now it's working on um, rebuilding. That's gonna take forever. Uh, a day or so, if that's forever. It's gonna be working on that. There is about 17 terabytes on this drive. Yeah, I've used 17 and a half terabytes for, well, at least four terabytes is uh, my Playhouse videos. The rest is my uh, Japanese Mango Tentacle porn series, uh, mostly entertainment. But, well, it's gonna be rebuilding forever. And this uh, three terabyte Bakuda, Seagate Bakuda drive, I'm gonna take to my Playhouse and I'm gonna be upgrade the smaller Synology NAS that I have there. I have a Synology NAS and I think it's occupied by four two terabyte drives. So this three terabyte drive will give me an extra terabyte of uh, data storage. Well, every single video I make where I do something with disks and storage and especially this, where am I? There, the Synology stuff and Exponology and lately the TerraMaster NAS box. Everybody wants me to be using FreeNAS. And well, I have actually used FreeNAS. Years back, I used FreeNAS and I exchanged it for a Synology box. Disk Station 411J, the one that is at my playhouse now. I exchanged the FreeNAS stuff with that one. And at the time I was actually using a virtual FreeNAS and it was not as if I didn't like it or anything. I just, I wanted a hardware box that I don't have to mess around with at all. And that's the really good thing with these Synology boxes. They maintain themselves. This one sends me an email every time it has upgraded the firmware. I don't have to do anything. It just sends me an email and tells me that it has upgraded the firmware. Or maybe it's more like um, in 10 minutes it will upgrade the firmware. So if I'm really using it, I could go in and say, nah, wait a bit, but it's, it's pretty, it just works. It's, it's fantastic like that. And this box, um, it's pretty expensive. I do believe I paid six and a half thousand Danish kroners for it, just under a thousand dollars. So it's not a cheap box, but it's just, I don't have to mess with it. It just works. So that has some value too. Um, if you want to tingle with it all the time, you could uh, go try something else. No problem. I don't have a problem with free NAS boxes. Um, well, I, I, I've been there, done that, and since then they use a lot more resources. When I was playing with it, it used about 256 megabytes, was more than enough to run free NAS. Now I think it's 8 gigabytes it uses. I really enjoy the Synology operating system and all the apps that are available for it. So I also really enjoy Exponology, the hacked version that you can put on almost any piece of um, hardware and it will play a Synology box just fine. I've done a couple of videos on that as well. If I really need a virtual NAS box, I would go for the Exponology box because I just enjoy the Synology box so much and when I have an Exponology it can communicate with a Synology box so I could have a virtual box virtual box okay a virtual Synology box talking to a physical Synology box like the one up here now oh, I'm totally blinded by the camera light sorry about that um, that would probably be the way that I would go with that I have already a couple of virtual Exponologies laying around from the videos that I did. I haven't really used it for anything else since because I didn't really need it. I just wanted to play around with it and see if I could build one of those and they are really awesome. I have been collecting some hardware that I would like to build one with one day. Um, put like 12 discs in a in a box with a little 
with a tiny little motherboard and a controller. I think that would be fun to play with. Uh, probably more powerful than the processor and more RAM than, than this one has. It, it's not as if they come with a lot of processing power. These are actually pretty slow. It's an, kind of an, I think it's an Atom processor that is in those. So even though it costs a thousand dollars, well, it's not for the computing power. But you buy comfort. It just works. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And join me over at Google Plus where I occasionally post something interesting um, about my channel or about something else. I just posted about uh, Lenovo tweeting about my videos on their, on their Twitter feed. Yeah. I don't use Twitter much, but I do have a Twitter account and I do also tweet out every new video that I put out there. So have a nice day. Bye bye.